Yeah. Um, so this is a story that is about uh, 20 years old. Um, it's, um, it's a particularly uh, happy story for me for a whole bunch of reasons. The most important of which is that it was when I noticed that my brain had started working again after submitting my PhD. I went through a long period where it just hurt to think about stuff uh, after I submitted my PhD, where I didn't really feel like a functioning thinking member of the community, um, you know, postnatal depression or something like that. And this was the switched back on moment that, that you know, made me say hello to myself again. Um, uh, and I guess we, we start uh, with some examples. Uh, I mean, what's about contextualization is a very important part of uh, my, uh, or the way I think about all sorts of different things. And this particular uh, uh, study is into spatial uh, contextualization inside data structures. So I've got some data structures here. Here's a binary tree and here's a ternary tree you see this binary tree has uh, nodes that have uh, two substructures and each substructure is either an integer like one or a pointer to another node um, so i'm um, asking me you know important questions in life uh, where am i um, is almost as important as who am i and who are you um, so let's, uh, let's ask, what is it like to be here in this binary tree? Imagine we are exploring it and we are talking about what it's like to be here. We are visiting a particular subtree, which has a top node with six on the left and a further subtree on the right, seven and eight as its two substructures. Uh, so as I've said here, you can think of this, the type of these binary trees as solving the equation bin equals int plus bin squared. A tree is either a number, like one, uh, or it's a pair of substructures. Um, so I'm using plus to mean choice and multiplication uh, to mean uh, pairing and I'm using squared as a shorthand for bin cross bin. Is everyone happy with what the data are? Yeah. Right. Then the question I'm asking though, it's clear that this, the, the substructure in focus is characterized just by the same type bin. But what is the type of the context? What is it like to be the surroundings of this point of focus? And how might we actually represent them as data? Well, one thing we might do, uh, especially if we're in a situation where we're able to mutate data, is to transform the context by reversing the pointers that take us, that we follow to get to the substructure. We might actually replace this pointer uh, like that. And so each pointer uh, now the down pointer becomes an up pointer. So we can see that we now have a pointer chain that follows our immediate parent to our grandparent to our great grandparent, and then we stop because that was the root of the original tree. So that's, we might actually literally do, as we work our way around the tree, we might literally uh, perform these pointer reversals to remember the way back, the way we came, and to allow us to step back out again. So we can see that the context is a, a, a sequence, it's a list. This is a linked list structure if you look at the blue edges. 
but what are the things in the list? So the context is a list of bin prime, I'm going to call it, but what is bin prime? Uh, well, at every step, what we have is a blue pointer either in the left or the right, so we have to remember which, and we have a binary tree on the other side. So we either have blue on the left uh, and uh, a binary tree on the right, or we have blue on the right and a binary tree on the left. So it's clear that we have a choice of two possibilities, so an element with a type of two elements and another tree, an ordinary binary tree dangling downwards. So we have, we have chosen which pointer to reverse and then we've kept all the other binary tree components and in this case there's just one. So the step type is two times b. All right. Let's play the same game with ternary trees and ask what is it like to be here? So now ternary trees. No, ternary trees are given by n plus turn cubed. So each node has three substructures. So let's play the same pointer reversal game. Um, we came here along this edge. So I will connect this to its parent. And then here, this is the pointer that gets reversed. Point to that node, and this is the pointer which stops. So again, our journey back to the root is a list. So here, context, let's call this B context, and this is T context, is a list of turn prime, where turn prime is what? Uh, okay, there's a question. Um, so uh, we are, well, we're not choosing, we're noticing what was chosen, right? We, the choices were all made when I selected the subtree to be in focus. And then the question is, which pointers did I follow to get to the subtree in focus? Uh, so then the question is, how do I represent that information? If I wanted to interpret uh, the structure correctly as a path back uh, to the root, then I need to know which of the two cells has the blue pointer, right? Because I wouldn't want to mix up this blue pointer for this red down pointer. That's not taking me back to the root. Uh, so the information we need to record is which of the two is the blue one? And what's the, what's the other red thing? Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna play the same game now. Uh, again, we've got a list and we've got to play which is the blue one. And now there's three choices. It could be right, left, or middle. And we've got to remember the other two structures that are uh, alongside. And that means we have to remember a pair of ternary trees. Right. So the step type for contexts in ternary trees is uh, three times turn squared. Uh, so now looking at this equation versus this equation, looking at 
this equation and this equation, there's uh, you know one plus bin or int plus bin squared becomes two bin, int plus turn cubed becomes three turn squared. I thought, hang on a minute, that's 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 an outrageous coincidence if it's coincidence. What seems to be going on here is symbolic differentiation. I take uh, the uh, the defining equation of the type and I differentiate it with respect to the type. And out comes the formula for the step. Uh, and it makes a certain amount of sense because it's about, uh, you know, what's the contribution made by that one thing we're, we're picking once. Okay, so it looks, it looks like there's some differential calculus going on here. All right, uh, so this is about this talk, data with a hole in it, you know, here's the hole, here's the hole, and what's it like to be the surroundings of the hole, uh, is about uh, the, the application of differential operators uh, to yield useful spatial notions of context within data structures. And, um, uh, and you can certainly deploy it in a purely functional context just by building list types. Um, uh, but it's also interesting to think about from the point of view of uh, you know, really doing pointer swinging to uh, mutate data structures to remember where you are in them and where you've been, because apart from anything else, that's one way of uh, performing in-place operations on tree-like data structures without the need for a stack, because the, um, uh, the, the sequence of back pointers essentially acts as the stack. So, uh, everyone okay with these two examples? And that, you know, that the, that the strong smell of the differential calculus has been transmitted by squared to two times and cubed to three times squared. Okay, so let's investigate this with slightly more rigor. Okay, so I'm going to do this by actually picking, you know, focusing on the underlying uh, functor from which the data structure is, is generated. So let's have a look at some of these things. So data as mu f, uh, where F from set to set is a subnode container. And then let's look. So the idea is that uh, F describes what it's like to be one node in the data structure. And then we figure out what a whole tree is like by taking the least fixed point of F. So we're thinking of nodes in a tree as a container of subnodes. All right, so let's give ourselves a little kit for what these Fs might be. Um, and I'm gonna think of them as sort of tree-like structures. Where, um, so where a tree basically has a pointer coming in red pointer coming in and some red pointers going out. So what are the things that live here? Uh, well, uh, there are constants of type A. So this is 
constant a x is a. Well, let's draw a picture. Um, these just have an a inside them and no red connectivity. All right. Then there's the identity, which just have a single substructure. They consist entirely of a single substructure. Uh, then there's F plus G, uh, which is either uh, In left or in right, in left of an F or in right of a G. Left times G, which looks like an F and a G, and I'll even get as far as F composed with G, which is where we have an F structure that has inside it a bunch of substructures that have the point to G structures. Um, so the idea is that we can build up, um, uh, we can uh, build up our node structures using these uh, pieces of machinery. Just for uh, reference, bin here is given by mu of constant int plus i times i. So it's either an integer or it's a pair of substructures. And turn likewise a n plus i times i times i. Okay. Um, so yeah, and in general, these s and g's might have some stuff inside them. Okay, um, so let's ask the question, um, uh, what is it like uh, to, be, uh, to be one of these things with one substructure cut out? Let's work our way along. Right, constants, have no substructures. Uh, so uh, what is it, how might we represent what it means to cut out a substructure from a thing with no substructures? Well, that's impossible. So there are no ways to do it. So let's say with a hole, Right. This one is thanks that all. This is impossible. All right. No. Uh, what about uh, what about the identity? How how am I in? How might we represent the ways in which we can cut out one substructure? Well, let's do it. I've cut out the one substructure that there is, and there was 
and there's no other extra information to record to make the context because this thing consists exactly of its one substructure. So uh, this is trivial. Okay. Um, how can we cut out one substructure from uh, one of these or one of these? Well, if the thing that we're cutting up is an in left of f, then we're just cutting one substructure from the underlying f, maybe, maybe that one. Or if we're in right g, we might be cutting out this one. Um, so, uh, so those are our two possibilities. Um, so this or that. Uh, for this one, I'm going to have to make another copy of my picture. For this one, what do we have? We, we've got a pair of an S structure and a G structure. So what we have to do to cut out one substructure, to isolate one of these red dots, is first of all to choose whether to go left or right. And then what happens? Well, we can go left and we can cut out a substructure from the F. Or we can go right and cut out a substructure from the G. And in each case, we leave the other thing alone. So an, an F and G with a hole is an F with a hole and a G, or an F and a G with a hole. Finally, let's look at the composition. So here we've got an F full of Gs. And we're looking for the substructures of the things that live in the Gs. So what's going to happen is that we're going to pick one of the substructures of the F, maybe this one. And inside that, there's a G. And we pick one of the substructures of the Gs. Okay, so now what I want to do is to turn these pictures into algebra. I want to define um, what it is to be df, the functor uh, that say, acts as the container for the remaining substructures. Because that's the thing that's going to give us our step type. So uh, what we've said here is that in this, this case is impossible. So D of Ka is K zero, right? We'll never be able to make some structure in, uh, no matter what we apply K zero to, no matter what the, the substructures are, we'll never be able to, to pick something to put in the in the apex of the node. Similarly, the I is K1. So that's to say there are no substructures and the label in the node is trivial because there's no extra contextual information other than, you know, that's the surroundings of this substructure. That was all there was. Okay, and here we have D of F plus G is DF plus DG. So uh, we, we were just saying, well, all we do, we've got a choice of S or G's, and that turns into a choice of F with a whole or a G with a hole. An F or a G with a hole is an F with a hole or a G with a hole. You can read D 
the operator D as with a hole. Okay. Um, and then we have D, F. You know, the, a, a pair of an F and a G with a hole is either an F with a hole and a G or an F and a G with a hole. And what have we here? An F full of G's with a hole is an F with a hole full of G's paired with a G with a hole. So what we're saying here is that the, the stuff outside of the hole in the outer structure is in fully intact G's. That's what this composition is doing. And then sitting in the hole for, of this F is a G with a hole. So what have we managed to recover from these pictures just by selecting a substructure are a bunch of equations that date back to the 17th century. Um, uh, in this form, I would unambiguously give Leibniz the credit uh, for, for, for this notion. He was, uh, I mean, by bothering to pay attention to the variable, uh, Leibniz was uh, clearly aware that differentiation is something you do to functions. Um, so I think uh, he, uh, he deserves the credit for that insight. But here it is as a spatial operation on data types, choosing where the hole is and what the surroundings are. So that means uh, that uh, we uh, 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 so a context a mu f context is a list where each uh, step in the list is given by a df. Uh, where uh, the data that live in the remaining positions in the DF are, um, uh, are intact trees. So each sequence is uh, an F with a hole, or each thing in the sequence is an F with a hole, and what plugs in to the remaining positions outside the hole are intact subtrees. So the hole, pick, picking the hole chooses which pointer to reverse. That those become the pointers that join the list together. And, uh, and these are all of the other, the, the red pointers as I had them in the original diagram that are still whole subtrees that we're not visiting. So now we've got the, the formula for computing spatial context. Everybody okay so far? How am I doing for time? 10 o'clock, not bad. Okay. <clears throat> so now that we've got ourselves this differential operator, what games uh, can we play with it? Um, so what uh, I want uh, to do is to explore uh, a bunch of uh, operations that can be defined generically on this structure. Um, so let's uh, let me do that. I will need to. Maybe I will just dolly this way a bit, get myself a bit more bored. Um, okay, so 
I wanted to find an operation called opt. Um, and let me draw a picture first. Um, so that's the pictorial specification of op. We've got um, a context and a thing that would go in the hole. And we get back the result of putting the thing in the hole. That's to say, the type of op is the f paired with i gives me an f. So here, you notice I'm just writing arrows between functors. I'm expecting it not to matter what the element type is. These are, these are natural transformations. Um, I want to write down. Um, and uh, what down does is it takes uh, a thing with some substructures and it gives us A similar looking thing, except screw this up. Am I just about still on? Just about. Um, Right. What down does is it computes uh, all the ways in which you could visit one of the substructures. And it decorates, that's it, or in other words, it decorates every substructure with its context. So uh, we have three positions here, one, two, and three. And uh, position one now gets to store uh, the whole structure uh, focused around position one. In position two, now in the output, we have the decomposition of the whole structure focused around position two. And in position three, we have the decomposition focused around position three. So what is Don doing? It takes an F and it gives us an F composed with DF cross I. So this um, uh, DF cross I, what does that really mean? That means a pair of a one whole context in an S and there's and an element that you could put in the hole. So this is uh, what, it is, what it means to be locally visiting one particular substructure of a container. This is exactly choosing where to put your finger on a substructure. That's what DF cross I is. 
So, uh, I don't think, uh, well, unless you really want me to work through the definitions of these things for all of these operators, I hope it's clear that, um, uh, that you can do it. Um, uh, down is slightly more fun than up. Um, but what happens, for example, if, um, uh, if you have uh, one of these contexts for, for up, if you have one of these contexts and you have an element to put here, you uh, recursively um, plug in just for the F structure and then you reattach the label in left. If you're going up in a pair, you see which component you need to visit, uh, whether, you need, whether you need to plug in an F and reattach the G, or whether you need to plug in the G and reattach the F. But you have exactly all the things you need to do that. The plus tells you which way to go, and then you either have a, a thing to plug into and a thing to reattach. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, for down, uh, you look at what you've got uh, here. You say, okay, I've got, if I get in left of an F structure, I say, how do I go down within the F structure? And then I reattach in left to all of those contexts. Uh, or if I, similarly, if I get G. Uh, if I, for a pair, how do I go down? Well, I need to compute both how to go down in the F part and then reattach the G to all of those. Uh, and I also need to figure out all the ways I can go down in the G part and then I reattach the F to all of those outputs. Um, so that's, that's how those things go. Um, but uh, we've, uh, so we've got up and we've got down. I'm going to have to move back and give myself more board here again. Um, uh, so up destroys a decomposition and down finds all the possible decompositions. But there are two other operations that are really interesting and useful. Uh, there's an operation called here. Which takes a thing in a context. And just gives us the thing. So it's what is here. Forget the context. Just focus on what's here. The type of that is we get a decomposition of a context and a thing in the whole, and we just keep the thing in the whole. And then there is uh, uh, an operation called where which takes a df cross i, oh, no, I'm giving the game away. Uh, which takes a decomposition and gives us back A decomposition where in every position we have decorated that position with its context. So I'm going to use the red hand. Nick. 
this position. Uh, we have uh, um, so this is one, two, three. This is one, two is being plugged back in. Here, uh, two has been plugged back in, and we now focus on three. So, what am I saying here? I'm saying, um, here at the moment, but where could I move to? I sometimes call where sideways. It's what are my options? My what are my alternative de um, um, decomposition options? at this level. Um, so sitting in the current position, I can stay in the current position. Or in the left position, I now have the alternative decomposition of the left position. And in the right position, I have the alternative decomposition at the right position. So the type of where is takes decompositions to decompositions which contain decompositions. That's what this picture's giving you. Uh, so that is to say, um, I mean, you can check, well, so given what I've said, you should uh, expect that if we perform the where operation and then everywhere in this resulting structure, uh, we perform the here operation, we get back, so we throw away all of these pieces we get back the decomposition we started with. If instead we just uh, ask uh, what is here on this picture, we get back the decomposition we started with. Uh, and uh, if we perform the same uh, 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 I mean, how am I going to say this is associative? Um, and if we perform the same operation either on the on all the inner decompositions or on the outer decomposition again, we'll get the same answer. So that's to say, we now have not just the operations, but uh, the um, uh, but the laws that make decompositions a co-monad, no matter what uh, uh, what f is. Um, so those um, so the co-monadic structure tells you how to either throw away the context or move around on the same level that you currently are, and that gives you the full navigation possibilities compared with uh, up. And, and down, which tell you sort of how to go up a level or all the ways you can visit the substructure. Um, so uh, uh, the Comanatic structure is kind of, uh, which you know, you get it for free. What is Comanatic structure? Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a way of being able to look around you uh, more effectively. So, um, uh, monadic structure allows you to do more stuff uh, on the way to producing an output. Co-monadic
that extra lets you see more of the surroundings of your input. So you should think of the presence of co-monadic structure on the input side of an operation uh, as enabling you, if you want to, to see more of where you are. And this uh, gives us potential, uh, a potentially neat new way of, of programming where uh, the trick, I mean, uh, the wonderful trick that Moji figured out uh, was uh, that uh, when you program monadically, most of the time you just use the return. You, you want, you, the, the translation allows you to pretend there, there are no effects going on, and then when there are, the right plumbing happens to make them appear. But one could do exactly the same thing uh, with pattern matching on the left-hand side of functional programs, where we could privilege with the cheat notation the idea that we don't need to look at the surroundings of the input. Um, uh, most of the time, uh, we just need to focus on the input itself. But with cheap notation, we could say, well, actually, maybe I would like to look a few layers out from here. Uh, I wonder if I can do some, make up some fancy programming notation on the fly to, uh, to illustrate that, maybe at some point. Um, but, uh, so my idea is uh, more or less that uh, if you have, if you're writing some function, uh, which is from some uh, co-monadic structure wrapped around S, uh, then, uh, then the notation should look like, if you write fs equals t, that means, that really means, um, but you should also be able to write fs at, with, I don't mean an as pattern, uh, maybe I shouldn't be writing at sign then, um, s in, T. So the idea is uh, that you have this uh, extra pattern matching notation that overrides the default assumption that the context is not interesting. Right? The default is that there's no useful information in the context. Uh, but uh, the um, uh, uh, the um, override, which, which gets the cheap but not uh, uh, not invisible syntax that says, I want to look at the thing and its context. Um, and then uh, correspondingly, we need stuff on the right hand side that allows us to change context locally. Um, so that's, that's what we're kind of missing at the moment is um, uh, is a way of um, uh, of programming uh, more um, uh, in, in a localized way. So at the moment, um, well, maybe I should give an example. Uh, Let me write a program for computing the mirror image of a binary tree. Um, so I'll just remind you here, bin is int plus uh, bin squared and context is list of, I'm actually going to write bin plus bin. 
Um, but I'm going to write this, well, okay, so the traditional thing is to write mirror bin to bin like this. Mirror of inlet of I is inlet of I. Mirror of in right L comma R is in right mirror R mirror L. Everybody happy with what this program does? Is that yeah? So this is the executable specification of the operation I want to write. But um, uh, my complaint is, apart from anything else, uh, that it's uh, that it's far too recursive. That I've got two. Uh, two recursive calls on the right hand side, uh, which live under a constructor. So this is um, potentially a very stack heavy program. Um, so I'm going to transform this program uh, to, um, uh, to write Uh, uh, to a tail recursive form that eliminates the stack. And I'm going to do that um, and there's going to be another program called unload with the same type. So what's going to happen? Um, so, um, let me get this right. Um, uh, so if I am loading, uh, uh, and I have a node, then I'm going to carry on loading, uh, and I'm going to write my um, uh, my cons is on the right for my stack. Um, so I went left, and R is on the right. Um, oh, yeah. What's <laughs> okay, so what I'm saying is load, if it sees a node, it goes left. So it records, I went left, I'm saving R on the stack, uh, and I'm now focused on the left subtree. And if I see a number, if once I've reached uh, a leaf, that's when I start unloading. Right. And then unload when it reaches the empty stack gives back the tree if we look at the stack and we see that we were in the left uh, then we finished mirroring the left subtree, but we still have to mirror the right subtree. So that becomes load of stack with in right, and we save the tree, 
that we've flipped over uh, and we go um, right instead. Meanwhile, if we are coming back from the right subtree and we've got its mirror image, we carry on unloading with the stack and a node that has the two images, the mirrored right uh, subtree to the left and the mirrored left subtree to the right. So you can see that this has turned into uh, a, a loop. Load and unload have tail calls to each other. So we're using uh, the, the data structure of the context to represent all the stack we need. What's more, it's an entirely linear operation. So this can completely be done in place uh, by exactly the point of reversal technique. That's what it amounts to, the point of reversal technique that I was drawing uh, in the diagrams at the start of the talk. Okay, I've uh, uh, been going for an hour. I'll just finish with, uh, uh, well, I don't know, how, how long have I got? I, I'm sort of budgeting for an hour. Yeah, it was one uh -huh. hour, but it's, it's okay. Um, but I'm happy, to, I'm happy to wind up soon and then switch to kind of responsive mode. Um, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so this is all very well uh, for, uh, for reversing a tree. But what if we wanted uh, to... Uh, uh, to do um, something like evaluate, maybe the tree is a, is a syntax tree of some expression language uh, and we want to evaluate it, maybe by adding up all the integers, for example. Then we've got this sort of lopsided thing. This is no longer the right structure to express how to do that. Uh, if we wanted to add up uh, all of the uh, integers, uh, uh, then we would need, I wonder if I can actually perform this transformation. Uh, oh, I should have, just before I do that, I should of course say mirror of T is load of empty stack and t that just joins the dots okay uh, so let me change color and attempt to uh, 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 adjust uh, this so instead of being uh, bin to bin, it's going to be bin to int, and it's going to be sum. Sum, sum, and then here it's um, sum L plus sum R. Uh, Okay, I want to do the same trick, only I'm not giving back a tree now, I'm giving back a number. I'm turning trees into numbers. What happens to this structure? Um, well, uh, okay, first of all, I'm giving back an int. Um, uh, so, Actually, what's going to happen is that's the type of load and the type of unload is going to be context cross int to int. Um, okay, uh, and then 
Uh, let's look at what happens. Uh, when we start loading and we see a node, we go left and remember the thing on the right. That seems perfectly fine to me. <coughs> when we reach a number, then we start unloading with that number. Uh, OK. Uh, if we're unloading and we've reached the, uh, the back out to the root and we've got our total here, t, then we've got our total. OK. Uh, if we are uh, unloading and we come back from the left uh, with L prime, we need to visit the thing on the right. But now, the thing that we need to stash, the L prime, is not a tree. It's a number. So this says we need to change contexts so that uh, uh, when we go right, the thing that we're remembering is an int. Um, so, uh, so that's all right. And then here, when we come back from the right, instead of building a tree, we just compute L prime plus R prime. And then this is sum. So um, what's happened uh, is that uh, there is uh, a, uh, a slight change in the, um, in the structure of, um, of contexts, because when we go left, we still have old things to the right of us. And when we go right, we have new things to the left of us. So left rightness now matters. Um, so how do we compute um, that, um, uh, that structure? Well, um, uh, Again, I think I will. Um, right. So I'm going to compute a structure here, um, which I call the dissection of F. Uh, and it takes um, two arguments, the new stuff on the left and the old stuff on the right. Or stuff on the left and stuff on the right, let's call them X and Y. Uh, uh, I've got two operators, left and right. Um, so, um, so for, I'm not going to go through the whole detail of this, um, but I'll just do this suggested example. What's the definition of the left, right dissection of F cross G? Well, it's the dissection of F with G stuff on the right with right with right right stuff in the G, or it's left stuff in the F, and a di dissection of G. So it's very very similar to the case we have. So the derivative is the case where X and Y are the same, and now all I'm doing is saying stuff that you can have different stuff left of the whole and right of the whole. And in general, you expect this to satisfy. Think about how to move from left to right in a structure. Where can you start from? You can start uh, all the way at the left, so everything to the right of you is right stuff. Or you can be somewhere in the middle, uh, 
with um, uh, with x is to the left and y is to the right. But you're ready to move right, and that means you must have an x ready to put in the hole. To, uh, to move one position to the right, so this is right. To move one position to the right of where you are, you have to have an x to put in the position that you're leaving. So if you've got You've got blue things to the left and red things to the right. Is that visible? Yeah. In order to move the position one step to the right, you need to have a blue thing ready to shove in the hole. Okay. And where does that get you to? Well, there's two possibilities. Either you do move one place to the right, in which case out pops a red thing. Right? See, if we move this hole one place to the right, we put the blue thing in, we move one place to the right, the next red thing will come out. Or uh, if we make it, we might, we might have been visiting the very last position in which case we've made it all the way to the right and out comes an f of x. So we have, and actually this is an isomorphism. It, uh, it's, let me write. Uh, this cuts both ways. Um, so what I'm going to do is collect terms in the dissection uh, just pretending I can do arbitrary algebra with types. Um, uh, and what's that? So I brought this term over to that side, uh, what's on the other side? Uh, so the dissection of f, x, and y is fx minus fy divided by x minus y. So that is to say, this isomorphism witnesses that the dissection is the solution, or it is a solution to the equation that defines a divided difference. So this is Newton's revenge. The generalization of dissection that allows us to consider lefts and rights is this generalized notion of divided difference. So if you let X and Y approach each other and make them the same, then you get the derivative we know and love. But there's other stuff you can do. Uh, you can, for example, insist that X is zero, and that gives you Brzezowski's derivative of regular expressions that finds the leftmost position. You just say, nothing is allowed to the left of the, of the whole, uh, but stuff is allowed to the right. That's Brzezowski's derivative. And there's another derivative where you choose, or another special case where you choose y is 1. And that's when you're building stuff. You're saying, I've got x's in the places I've visited so far, uh, that, you know, in the structure that I'm building, but I haven't, I haven't reached the places where I'm going to build more stuff. That's also known as, as Fox's derivative. Uh, so all of these things have shown up in, in mathematical situations. Uh, uh, and they all are pleasingly meaningful for, uh, for data structures. And this in particular, this dissection, this divided difference, which separates left stuff from right stuff, is the key to transforming uh, structurally recursive functions uh, that happen to be linear uh, to be able, you know, you can make sure that they uh, 
can be implemented in place by pointer twiddling uh, running without a stack. So that's, uh, that's the kind of uh, tutorial idea for how to, uh, to use differential operators to compute the intermediate data structures that you're actually using when you're doing in-place manipulations of tree-like data. Now, that seems like a, a good place to stop. Thank you very much, uh, Connor. That was really, really interesting.